So this question says, a slow environmental reaction has a half-life independent of the initial concentration, so it's a first-order reaction, of 12,100 years, or 1.21 times 10 to the 40 years. And then it says, how long will it take 16.8% of the sample to react? So we have here um, the uh, basic information that would allow us to calculate this. But there's a few things that we need to realize. The first thing we need to realize is that this is a first order reaction because the half-life is independent of the initial concentration. The other thing we need to realize is we're not going exactly one half-life or two half-lives. If it was one or two half-lives, right, if it was how long will 50% uh, take for 50% of the sample to react, the answer would be 1,200, or excuse me, 12,100 years. But unfortunately, this is a, not an exact half-life, so you can't just find some proportionality. Unfortunately, you have to use the integrated first order rate law, which we've used in a previous question. But here I'm going to use it for A's. So the ln of the concentration of A at some time is equal to negative kT times, or excuse me, plus the ln of the initial concentration of A. So this is the integrated first order rate law, which is just something you kind of have to know. Now, how are we going to figure these things out? There's a few things that we want to find before we can find T. So T is what the question is asking, how long? But we need concentration of A at some time, and we need the initial concentration of A. Since we don't know these things exactly, we have to make them up. Specifically, we're going to call the initial concentration of A as one. If you want to use 100, that would work too. All right, 100% or just one. We now want to lose 16.8%. So we want to subtract out from that 0 0.168. And if we lose 16.8%, that means the concentration of A after some time should be 0 0.8. 0.832, said another way, 83.2% of A should be left. So we're going to use the initial concentration of A as 1, I'm going to plug that in here, and then we're going to use 83.2.832 as the concentration of A at some time. Again, you could use 183.2 if you prefer, you get the same answer, um, but I'm going to use 1 and 0.832. Now, the only thing we need to do is find K. Well, we know that the T1 half equals 0 0.693 over k. And if we rearrange this equation, multiply by k, divide by t1 half, k equals 0 0.693 divided by the time of the half-life. Well, in this case, we know the time of the half-life. It's 0 0.693 divided by our 12,100 years. So we know that k is equal to 5.73 times 10 to the minus 5 per year. So we can find k from the half-life equation. We now have everything we need to solve this equation. So the ln of a at some t is the ln of 0 0.832 equals negative k 5.73 times 10 to the minus 5 per year times t, t is our variable, plus the ln oops, of 1, that should be ln, which is the initial um, concentration. The advantage of using 1 here is the ln of 1 is 0. So this just goes. All right. So the ln of 0.832 is negative 0 0.184. You just do that in your calculator. Equals negative 5.73 times 10 to the minus 5 per year times t. Again, the ln 1 disappears because the ln of 1 is 0, so then it would be plus 0, which you don't need to write. Divide both sides by negative 5.73 times 10 to the minus 5. Divide by negative 5.73 times 10 to the minus 5. And you get that the t is equal to 3,210 years. Note that I went to three sig figs because everything here has three significant figures, so I made this as uh, a zero. So if you get a slightly different number because it rounded differently, uh, don't worry about that. Um, sig figs aren't going to be uh, really an issue in questions like this where the math is so complicated. 
So if you haven't already watched the first part, please start with that. It says if there are initially 4.2 moles of reactant, how many moles will remain after 37,500 years or 3.75 times 10 to the four years, assume no volume change. So basically if you have moles, then you also have molarity if the volume is constant. Um, so we want to again use the integrated first order rate law, which in this case is ln of the concentration of A at some T equals negative KT plus the ln of the initial concentration of A. Note that we found K in the previous part, okay? In this case, what we want to find is the number of moles remaining. We're going to use moles instead of concentration because there is no volume change. If we use moles here and moles here, they'll, the concentrations and the moles will be proportional because they're both the same. So if we get the, the volume is the same. So the ln of the concentration of A at some T, which is our variable, equals negative K, which we found before, 5.73 times 10 to the minus 5 per year times... 3.75 times 10 to the 4 years plus ln of our initial 14.2 moles. Okay, so the ln of the concentration of A at some t equals, what you want to do is you want to multiply these two numbers together. When you multiply these two numbers together, you get negative 2.15. Then you want to take the ln of your 14.2 and you find that that is 2.65. Then you find that the ln of the concentration of A at some t, you just negative this plus that, is equal to 0 0.50. To get rid of the ln, you need to hit the shift usually or the second key on your calculator and you hit e to the ln and e to the 5, to the 0.5, sorry. The E of the LN is simply, the LN goes away, so you get the concentration of A at some T, equals E to the 0.5, which is 1.65 moles. So what this tells us is that after 37,500 years, you'll have 1.65 of your original 14.2 moles remaining.